Five things I hate about my otherwise totally awesome camper van build. That, 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 this, and that. And one of which leaves me with no choice but to rip it all out and start again. Number one on the list, and that is automotive carpet. When I kitted this van out, I was on a bit of a time crunch. I had no choice but to use four-way stretch carpet on the walls. There is a time and a place for four-way stretch carpet in a camper van around pillars, really intricate areas. But I have black carpet on the walls. Not only do I think this is not very professional, it's very, very dark and dog hair sticks to it and drives me crazy. Number two on the list, and that is my kitchen sink tap. So it's not actually the style of the kitchen tap that offends me. I like the foldable tap. I know it's plastic. I know it feels like it's going to break off in your hands, but this is a space saver. The ability to close that down and shut this with the extra worktop space. I had a domestic kitchen sink and sink tap in my previous layout and I did not like it. This is something I chose. But when you buy one of these sinks on the internet, the chances are your tap connections will look like this. Now that is okay if you are using the hose style pipe throughout your van, but if you are using 12 mil John Guest fittings and pipe work like I did, that means you need to go from 12 mil, user fitting with a barb on it, Jubilee clip, bit of pipe with a barb on it, Jubilee, long story short, mine leaks. I'm a plumber and mine leaks. When I relay this van, I will be changing this tap because they make them exactly the same with a half inch female on the bottom of there. If you want this tap, you buy one of these caps, you can have this tap. I've got about three of them. Number three on the list, and that is my shower tray. So with this style of shower tray, the standard camper van style shower trays, there is only one place that you can put the waste, and that is in this corner. While this looks great, it stays absolutely lovely and clean. I have literally just said, look how lovely and clean this shower tray looks, yet what you are looking at is a pool of dirty water sat in the bottom of the shower tray. That has actually been left there for descriptive purposes to show what happens when the water does not run away. As soon as you walk in the shower tray to use it, that creates um, like mud. You can see the footprints and things like that. When I said it's lovely and clean, I mean, Give it a wipe and it is as lovely and bright white as the day we bought it. I left that there to bolster the fact that the water not running away is a bit of an issue. If this was a van tour, this shower would have been clean top to bottom and looking absolutely beautiful. So that is on purpose. I've had no problems with it, even though that has fallen into this tray multiple times. There are no cracks. I feel that they are strong enough to be in a camper van. That is not the issue. The position of that waste being in that corner means when we park of an evening, we have the rear of the vehicle slightly higher than the front so the blood doesn't rush to our heads. That means water pools in the shower tray. There's nothing we can do about it. Parking and having a good night's sleep is obviously a lot more important than the little bit of puddle of water, but that can be very annoying. Moving forward, I'm gonna go for a stainless steel shower tray where either I can choose multiple outlets or water runs to the middle so no matter how i'm parked the water will discharge number four on the list and that is the u-shaped style bed this is the u-shaped style bed now this works absolutely awesome it looks absolutely fantastic obviously and um, the dog's appreciating in there excuse the paw prints it's not the style it's not how it looks it's not the function it's not even the fact that to sleep at night we have to set the bed up it's how that operation is done i ran out of time we were going camping we were going on a trip to france i had to get it sorted so basically all i do is put some battens across here that cushion shifts into middle that cushion shifts into the middle they lay flat and the bed is made it's just not very glamorous let's put it that way so while that is perfectly functional i would just like it to be a little bit smoother maybe something that slides out maybe a drawer runner maybe a panel that flips over a single panel just using a few um, bed slats i just don't feel that does the van and the operation of the bed justice so that is just something that i would like to address when relaying the van so before you guys think that I've got too much time on my hands that I'm going to rip this van out and start all over again just for the sake of those things, bear in mind, this van has an absolutely epic factory spec. 
It still only has 15,000 miles on the clock. It has so many factory goodies. I just really do believe that this van needs to have a layout and a fit out that is worthy of the base vehicle. If this van was just a, a 5,000 um, pound total rotter, this would be way above board than what it actually deserved. But this van is an absolutely gorgeous Mercedes build. And I think the fit out needs to accompany it. Five on the list, and that is the vinyl floor. If you don't know the backstory to this van build, you will not know that this is actually, in fact, the second time that I have built this van out. I built this van out once, it was heavy, I didn't like it, I didn't know much about layouts of vans, I got it totally wrong and I started again. I did not start from scratch and I think that's where the problem is. I wanted to keep the shower in because it would be too much work to take that out. I had no choice but to put a join in the floor. Now while this doesn't upset me too much, I don't think that that is very fair for the next user to have such a lovely, beautiful, gorgeous van with such a high spec, all of the goodies that someone went into Mercedes and bought while ordering this van and have a join in the floor. This is number five on the list guys, this join. This seam in the vinyl floor which when you stand up here pretty much totally disappears. This is why the whole van has to be ripped out and started again. So because the floor is one of the first things to go down, it runs under the shower, it runs under the kitchen, it runs under the bed at the back. That is the only way I would want that to be done if this was my van. I would not want someone to cut this section out here and relay a floor because when that tap leaked, which it did, go see number two on the list. When that tap leaked, it told me it was leaking straight away by coming out the bottom here. Now, if this vinyl floor was only done in this section, that would leak forever, go under the van, destroy stuff. That is not the way you do it. You lay the whole floor and then you sit the items on top of it. So, to make that good, all of this has to come out. At the same time, I can address all of the other things that are bugging me. That table's too big. Drop your comments below. Am I absolutely crazy to want to rip this van out and start again based on those five issues? So thanks once again for watching. Do subscribe and I'll see you next time.